three, two, one. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of We Talk. I'm Yolanda Now, and I will be your host for today. Before we get into today's news and interview, please check out this video clip. And now heading over to our website for some news. Namibia's representatives at the upcoming 2020 Tokyo Paralympic Games say they are ready to fly the national flag with pride when they step on the track to represent their country. Team Namibia is represented by three athletes who compete in T11, F11 and T13 track and field events at the Games starting on the 25th of, 24th of August. Speaking Earlier this week, Johannes Nambala, the 2016 Paralympic Games silver medalist in 200 meters and 400 meters, said he is ready to compete. It's not going to be easy, but as an athlete, I will have to show the rest of the world what I am made of. We came early to Japan to acclimatize and I feel the competition has finally gotten real, he said, adding that he cannot promise any medals but will give it his all. Nambala, who won gold in the 400 m 2019 World Para-Athletic Championships, will compete in the T13 100 m and 400 m. The 200 m event has been removed from this year's Games. The National Theatre of Namibia released an online reader, which is a compilation of perspectives by 18 local theatre and creative practitioners, offering recommendations on how emerging theatre artists could navigate theatre practices sustainably in the country. Through interviews and written segments, the capacity building reader includes an overview of some lived experiences in and around the Namibian theatre environment. NTN Public Relations Officer Desiree Mentor said the publication sheds light on available opportunities for drama graduates, demystifies the, availability, the viability and uses of storytelling skills, and offers a recommendation on artistic applications for alternative sectors and industries in Namibia. Imagine if your mobile phone could be used to spy on you, listen to your conversations, and send information and images from your device to a third party. This is not an imagined dystopian future. It is the story of Pegasus spyware put on mobile devices by clients of Israeli spyware software. Although the Pegasus spyware is meant to be used by law enforcement only and is targeted at high value individuals, this story provides some food for thought as mobile malware and spyware are not only aimed at the wealthy and the important, they can have serious impact on anyone's life. Other mobile threats, such as banking malware, for example, use a similar process to the Pegasus spyware to get users' devices. For example, many of these types of malware get installed by people clicking on a link that they received via SMS or WhatsApp and end up downloading a malicious app that could result in advertising click fraud, mobile ransomware, banking trojans or in some cases even roots or jailbreaks their phone to obtain a remote control over the device. The malware then allows for the criminals to listen to calls, take screenshots and see what the user types, catching passwords and banking details.
Today we're talking to Pat here from Women at Work and she's going to tell us about a new training program that they recently launched and it's all about nutrition and wellness for old people living in older age homes. Thank you Pat for your time. So Pat, you just you just had people in from the Katatura Old Age Home. How did that project start? Um, Melissa Jane Lowe from the City of Winter, who is um, apparently the social worker for the, for the old age home, she approached me and she asked me if I would um, be willing to give them training in nutrition and in basic cooking. So we started this last year, we started the arrangements and now they are here having their training. And um, how long is this course and how many students are there? There are four ladies involved and we've, the course is two weeks long. It's every day from 8 o'clock until 1 o'clock, um, Monday to Friday. Why, why was this so important to, to train them in nutrition? Um, nutrition is very important, um, especially in old people. They need to have all the right, it doesn't help they just eat bread or just eat millipop or just eat meat. They need their vitamins and their minerals and they need to also know that they need to eat less meat and have a proper diet for old people. It helps with their gout and it helps with blood pressure and it helps with the diabetes and all these um, things that old, older people have. Will this project be rolled out to other old age homes? If they're wanting training, we're willing to train anybody. And then what is the capacity? How many ladies can you accommodate? We can accommodate six at a time. Okay, and then what does the coursework entail? Um, they do three days of theory where they're learning how to clean the kitchen, and they learn about pests, um, they learn how to organize their kitchen, and then we also do a whole day of nutrition. And then the other days are, are practical cooking. We spoke a little bit off, off the camera um, about the fact that you also want them to be able to go home and prepare these dishes at their homes and not only where there is maybe an oven. So tell us about that, where, um, where they were taught how to make a rice pudding but they don't have ovens at yes. home. <laughs> so they were very excited about making rice pudding because it's a different way of using up leftover rice and a different way of preparing rice. And then one of the students said, but at home we don't have ovens. So then we said to them, all right, we'll show you how to make it just in the pot, which is what they learned today. And, and it's amazing to know that it's not only for them to go and, and work at the old age home, they can actually take it back to where they stay. That is one of our um, policies here at Women at Work, is that we're not just training the people for their work. We feel that women impact our society greatly and that it starts at home how you bring up your children, how you train your children, and anything that they learn here, they should be taking home and teaching to their children. It yes. gives their children a better start in life. For today's life hack, if you want to prevent acid reflux from happening at night, sleep on your left side. This way your stomach is higher than your esophagus, letting gravity take care of it. And next up, Jeanette Dierhardt for our Flex Minute. everybody and welcome back to Flex. Now I'm Jeanette Dierkar, your presenter for Flex. Now today we will be doing some lower back stretches for lower back pain. So we're going to start off with a pelvic tilt. You have your feet 
um, your foot flat on your feet flat on the floor so you just gotta gently so first of all let's just get our posture right okay or the movement right so your blower back should be against the floor belly button into your spine and then you just lift it a bit okay and now again so you can hold this for a few seconds and bring it down so just to repeat again um, your back your lower back should be down to the floor they should it shouldn't be whole, uh, hollowed out and you really tuck in your belly button and bring up that glutes and down again so you do this for a few repetitions and hold it there for, for a few seconds so this will uh, um, strengthen your spine and it will also stretch out your spine so when you strengthen that glute muscles as well and strengthen your spine it will definitely help you to have reduced lower back pain okay so while you also do this you squeeze the glutes i will see you guys next time don't forget to do your daily stretches and hopefully you'll live a happier and healthier life That brings us to the end of our show for today. I hope you enjoyed the interview. Please join us again tomorrow. We are talking chocolates. See you then.